Thanks, Ron. Thanks for the invitation and good afternoon, everybody. So I'm Marco Marcus. I'm a principal architect at Google, and we're going to talk about GNAI as if you probably haven't heard it before. Uh, you know, just just to think about like how easy is to was to create this image. Now, I used to I have been doing presentations over years, and trying to find the right imagery was always difficult. I had to go and look for uh, specific assets that have been approved or going to specific libraries that I will have. Now I can just put it on a prompt and I get what exactly what I'm looking for. That's the type of innovation and the type of adoption that we're starting to see in the market that it's, it's just fascinating, right? It's just so different compared to any other technology that is starting to help us or, or making us wonder how to, how to approach the market and how to work with the customers depending on where they are. So if you were thinking about like the typical adoption curve, you will probably look, remember this, if you have seen this, this chart, you probably remember it from uh, the typical explanation of like how the, the technology gets adopted. You have your innovators that are like always at the top of the sphere. Early adopters are the ones that are starting to put something in production. Early majority is the one, are the ones that are usually weighed enough to see others fail and then they start owning it by themselves. Then the majority is like once the once the technology is cheap enough to, to adopt it, they start using it. And then the laggards are the ones that if they have the, the budget, if they can do that, they will probably do it later in the in the future. Now, something that we're seeing with Gen AI is that the 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 pattern is changing a little bit. There is an article that was published by Harvard University in collaboration with a few professors from Vanderbilt University and the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis. I can share the link once, we, once we're done, but it's basically saying that 39% of the US population on age between 18 and 64 are using generative AI. And they use it at work Right with uh, for writing communications, performing administrative tasks, interpreting, translating, or summarizing content, searching for facts, and some are using it for so coding software. So if you think about it from that perspective, is is changing a little bit the the way I started picturing like this thirty nine percent of utilization, obviously just just specifically for US, it will be interesting to, to see what's the what's around the world. But I'm starting to think like this adoption, instead of happening from innovators to early adopters, it's actually happening across the board, right? Now you have this with the popularity of the chat on the last few months or the last couple of years. Now everybody has a chance to play with technology, right? So you either do it with a chat, you do it with APIs, you do it with, with uh, the specific technologies that we have. Now it doesn't matter if you are in a, very innovative company or in a company that has very few resources to innovate, the technology is there is available. There are a lot of things that you can do for free. There are a lot of things that you can do with a very low cost. And it's starting to change the behaviors on who can adopt the technology and how. Right? So for that purpose, what we started looking at is how do we, what are the typical personas that we're seeing as we talk to customers and we talk to different users and especially for Google Cloud, we have identified four personas that we'll, I'll take you through them and feel free to like, uh, you know, have your opinion, have your thoughts, but mostly, hopefully like each of these persons, some of these persons may uh, relate with some of your employees or some of, or by yourself it's, uh, or, or some of you already. Some of those are gonna be like how you or as a company see the adoption of Gen AI. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna, align the technology that we have with the different products so that it can give you an idea of like where to start, how to start this, and what open questions we still have today in terms of uh, adoption. So the first one we're gonna start with, we call it the Gen AI Explorer. This is a typical persona where uh, you, it, it can expand across the whole organization. You can see that's why we're, we're putting it very broad. It goes from innovators to laggards because this is the individual. Usually it's focused on uh, curious, uh, curious, uh, the, the curious mindset to start looking at, you know, what's available, how can, we, how can I use it? 
And these are typically that 40% falls into this where they want to they wanna, uh, make it easier for them to run an email or they want to make it easier to generate an image or um, review some code and do some stuff like that. So what we're doing is the way that we were approaching it is uh, try to find one of the motivators on these users and the type of challenge that they do. So in most of the cases, they just want to understand what's possible. They are they want to understand how much it costs. If you if you were familiar with like a few months ago, there was a a wave of like oh, all the GPUs and all that stuff. Like GPUs are expensive, right? So not everybody is going to be using a GPU. So these explorers are trying to find out like, well, if I'm not going to use a GPU because they're expensive, what can I do? And what basically what tools are available for free or what the tools are available at, at the subscription cost? And then what can I do with them, right? And in a lot of the cases, they're just trying to understand how their current data could be used, what is the readiness that they need to follow. And the reason why this expands across the board is because you can have very uh, early startups trying to figure something out or large uh, mature enterprises are trying to see like, well, based on what we have, how can we use it? The challenges as you can see here are is basically finding use cases. Now it's starting to become like this, uh, Gen AI is starting to become the, the the hammer and now everybody's trying to find the nail or how to use it. And it's uh, it's, it's an approach, right? But uh, we have some other recommendations how, how you can go with it. Um, sometimes there are too, many, too much data or not enough data in some cases. And, um, and if you're approaching in the, in the in the wrong in a different way or in the wrong way, you might end up like oh with a sticker shock like this could be very expensive. So the way we're approaching it is we make it very simple for users to get Gen AI adoption, and I make we make it in three packets or three components. If you are familiar with Gmail, we basically have the Gmail version for enterprise, and with the with the subscription now you have options to say help me write an email, right? Or I have a document, help me summarize this document. It gives you in bullets, you can you can play around with the technology in terms of like, give me some of the recommendations, shorten the paragraph, make it more expensive. Uh, some tricks and questions around how to use a spreadsheet. Everything, everything is basically how to use the, use, the Google Suite uh, makes it so much easier now with, uh, with Gemini for Workspace. For, for Gemini for Cloud, uh, this makes me remember my friend Prashant uh, a few months ago. Who used to, he used to ask me a lot of questions around, "Hey, how do I do this with Terraform? How do I set up a closet? How do I?" And I, you know, so that's how you have just those links available. So you send him the links. I will give him some some recommendations. And then one day I, I told him like, "Hey, let me show you something." So I show him how to ask the same question on Gemini for Cloud, and then I never heard from him again. It's like he started just reaching out. Like I asked him, like, "Hey, what's going on? I haven't heard from you." Like, well, now all this the the Gemini for class answering my question, so we can chat about all the other stuff and no longer for uh, about Terraform. So it, it's a different mindset, right? Now it's like you don't have to for so those typical questions or or random questions that is uh, is hard to find in the in the documentation. It's hard to understand how you're going to connect different things, etc. You can start asking those questions right, right away on Gemini, and that will, you will get those answers. And then the AI agents are click no code solutions that are uh, getting pre-trained on specific industries, let's say retail or finance or other other specific, special areas where so healthcare, for example, where now you can bring that agent and help you connect the dots on, uh, for example, writing product recommendations for your store, right? Or taking an image that was already from, from your products and applying a style from your website. So you can start using those agents. Uh, they, they can help you connect the dots. And this is a mix of kind of like what, what Brilio is gonna show later today in terms of like how you can take some of those agents for uh, the they call it, uh, contact center AI, which basically makes it easier to conversate, having the conversation with, with your users and with your data in a very simple way. The second bucket we have is AI augmented. And these are a little bit more sophisticated users that now they understand the, the technology. 
what they want to find is the value of it, right? So uh, this is where they're starting to, to connect the dots between existing systems and the AI component so that they can reduce either cost, they can start getting some, uh, maybe productizing it in, such, in, in some way on their, on their current offerings. And um, some of the change, the challenge that they have is like, well, now how do I integrate all this stuff with my data, make sure that it's, it's well-trained, make sure that I can, I can validate it and well, I don't mean, without having to worry a lot on the infrastructure itself. So you're familiar with Vertex, that's where, where the platform comes into the picture. We provide very simple uh, or, or comprehensive solutions that you can start bringing to say like, I have, uh, I have an idea I wanna do, for example, on a retail store, um, I wanna do these uh, recommendations for, for my website. I can, you can basically bring your data, your, your data sources. That's why you have all these connectors. You can apply the search engine to find, um, let's say your products or something on the, on the Q and A, some information specifically about your documentation. And then uh, basically that's how you use to do the, the grounding of the, of the responses. And what Vertex will provide you is like the whole end to end navigation of like from the moment you start building your application to deploying it, to monitoring it, make it easier, click no code, and it will give you the flexibility to scale based, uh, based on, on what you need. So usually these companies are not the typical um, Gen AI innovators. They are probably a little bit in between. Uh, they have some budget and they want to start playing around with the technology. So if you go with Vertex, usually the, the cost per API is relatively affordable. You can use it and you can start trying a lot. And then depending on the volume, that's when it gets it gets interesting. Then the Gen AI Power, we call it. These are the, the companies that are usually building software with Gen AI. Right? So if you think about like the previous ones were just adoption trying to get uh, uh, an improvement on their processes or trying to get some, uh, you know, some benefit on the day to day. The Gen AI power are actually companies that are building components or in injecting or embedding in AI, Gen AI on their solutions. So for, they, for them, they care about time to market. They care about reducing the time to get the value out of it. They care about measuring those co the costs and make sure they can have the, the return on investment. The, the challenges are like, how do you actually package it, product, productize it, and put it on production? How do you actually confirm that the model or, or what you're building, the solution is good enough in terms of the responses that you're getting? And, um, and monitoring the risk, right? It's a lot of the companies that we work with, the biggest uh, detractor is not the technology or the cost, it's usually the risk. Because, uh, you know, for... In a lot of cases, is uh, if an answer from the from the model can you know hallucinate and give you something weird, then it starts reducing the trust from the users on on you know the product that you're using. So uh, that's where, where we provide a more comprehensive set of solutions around Vertex, where now you can start using uh, more sophisticated grounding with your data, with a specific uh, documents, a specific guidelines. You can put more guardrails on around the model. You can start doing some more fine tuning. Um, if you you make the, the the difference between the previous example and this one is, you can start taking a generic model or we call it a foundational model, fine tuning it with your own information, fine tuning with with specific guidelines and, and guardrails, and then bring your data to to do the grounding to make sure that the answers are within the boundaries of what you want, right and and then, and then you can you can start adding the whole monitoring and observability on top of it to make sure that you can track if your you know the the what are the what is the quality of the responses from your models what is 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 the model drifting from your original uh, set of guidelines is the uh, are, are your users or your other detractors uh, attacking your website and trying to do some prompt injection and trying to like um, contaminate your, the answers and, and play around with that. So now th this becomes a little bit more, uh, more comprehensive. I have companies uh, like uh, 
that we work on, especially on, on the on this on this one in particular, we we see a lot on the digital native space where they have SaaS solutions and they start building uh, feature flagging in their in those solutions to to say like, hey, you know, if you, if you can do you, you, know, you click on the just Gen AI button, it's going to help you generate descriptions or generate the content for this. You can validate it, approve it, and then move on, right? So it's kind of like it's trying to find the right ways to to approach it as opposed to just make it very generic. And then the last one, um, which is the la the Gen AI disruptor, these are where the companies that typically are startups. We see some some large companies that are willing to make the investment, but if you think about like out of all the conversations we have been doing, this is the first time we're going to be talking about GPUs, and that's the that's the confusion that a lot of companies have. Like, is whenever they hear Gen AI, they hear GPUs, and like, oh, I'm going to, I have to use GPUs. Maybe, but not really, right? You can. There's a lot of stuff you can do to explore, to power your business, to um, enhance or, or build some capabilities. But unless you're going to be doing something completely radically new or completely different, that's when, as a disruptor, you want to build maybe a new offerings, new products. You want to challenge the current way we do certain things, right? Maybe you can. You want. You have a specific uh, data problem that you want to handle. And, or maybe you don't have enough data and now you want to start building some data, synthetic data to start validating those scenarios. Um, for mo in a lot of these cases, what we say are companies that have dedicated budget to do this and their main goal is to maximize it, right? Is how to make sure, how do we they make sure that they, the money is going to be investing on a yearly basis on innovation, they can get the right value out of it and help their teams to focus on the through all the noise right it, it, the, the reason why i say the noise here is like if you if you follow the news on gen ai it's almost every company is launching a new model and new technology there's a lot of stuff like which model should i use and there's a lot of churn mind churn that you have to to go through to really focus on like what do i want to do how, how am i going to accomplish do i have the, the right data to do this so for this again vertex uh, platform is still the choice or the recommendations because it's going to help you reduce a lot of the top process on uh, the infrastructure part. But also, if you are like more on the on the data science side and you want to start playing around with your own models, then we give you all the infrastructure that you need to support that. Right? You can you can either choose a great variety of GPUs and TPUs to say like, well, I'm going to be training small models or very large models. I'm going to start doing some inferencing and, and how, do I go, how am I going to share the resources among them? You may have people that, that are specific models in certain languages that we can support. Um, we'll give you the ability to serve those models and then to start having the right, um, the right metrics and, and monitoring around it. So as you can see, the way we have been evolving on, on how we're pitching or how we're or, working with the companies is like trying to find exactly where they are on the on this adoption curve and what type of challenges they want to follow so we can bring the right technology because it's not there is no single answer there is no simple hammer that you could use is usually what we're trying to make sure and, and daniel is going to cover about this is like how do you find the right value to the technology that you're, that you're using so to finalize i want to there are a few a few thoughts that we still have open in terms of like when we talk to customers, when we talk to to users, it's like um, first find yourself what are you in this journey, right? Where where what are the typical challenges that you face depending on your the the type of company you are, the type of uh, budget that you have, and then how do we help you get towards more power or or disruptive? It's like the this is a brand new technology that is, is becoming available for everybody, and we want to make sure you 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 take the right value out of it. The second part is like, or how do you measure that risk, and how do you how do we help you identify what's the risk on your industry or in your and your use case? As we we partner with companies uh, that they do data governance, we partner with companies that do observability, that do security. And it's basically how do we help organizations do it 
in the, in the right way as opposed to just like building something, launching it, and then get a lot of backlash because of um, the model was misbehaving. And uh, and probably the main one you see the last question here is how are you changing the user experience? Uh, just because there was a chat and everybody thinks the, the chat is the only way. Uh, you know, there are other ways. Gen AI is opening the door to other uh, ways to, to explore and to, co and to collaborate with technology. It, it may not have to be a chat. It may not have to be a UI, uh, like a typical website. Now it's giving you other options to play around with, like maybe devices, maybe robotics. Is how are you integ integrating this technology on your business so you can provide a better user experience? So just to close on the on the last couple of minutes is uh, I would just encourage you to try, encourage you to explore. And uh, remember, you don't have to go all in at the beginning with just buying GPUs if you don't know exactly where you're going to use them. Try to find your the, the path that you want to follow, the type of company that you are, the type of person that you are in terms of the, the different journey. And let us know if there's any way we can help.